Oi! When we first started Macro Insiders, we talked about how Macro is very lumpy in its returns. Not a lot happens for a long period of time. You kind of test the waters a bit and you build your macro framework. When we first launched, we spent a lot of time, Julian and I, building our macro framework so everybody understood what we thought was coming up. It's all about living in the future. And then slowly but surely, many of these things started falling into place. Julian had a fantastic call on some of the FANG stocks as we started to see volatility return to the market. I started to get incredibly bullish on dollars and bonds. We had some great trades in the dollar, which has been a bit choppy since, but generally over time, we've done really well. The bond trade, which Julian was part of as well, was literally one of the biggest home run trades I've ever had in my career. It's been an astonishing success. We started out in the long end of the bond market with things like TLT, and then we started to get into euro dollars. And we had to get people up the curve in that as well, because a lot of people didn't know what euro dollar futures were. They thought they were currency uh, futures, but they, they're not, they're interest rate futures. And that whole trade worked phenomenally well and has continued to work really, really well. I'm so proud of that and how we managed to get everybody through that whole trade from start to finish. But that's not all. Julian had a 50% home run in, in gold earlier in the year, and he still has that position to this date, and I also have gold positions outstanding as well. We've got several of these that are building the macro framework that have been huge. We've even had some single stock positions. As I said, Julian shorted some stocks. I was long an Indian stock called Make My Trip, which was a really interesting play on the Indian tourism market, and that did quite nicely too. There's been several of these over time that we've tested. Now, some of them we've got wrong as well. You know, we've had a couple of attempts here and there to trade things in the oil market, haven't quite worked out. Julian's had a stab at the short side of bonds, looking for a correction, that didn't quite work out. But that's how things are. There's gonna be trades that don't make money, but then there's gonna be these absolutely home run trades that come along once or twice every three or four years. And those trades are so big and so exciting and there's so much returns from them that that becomes the focus. And we're in that macro point now where many of these big trades have set up, the framework's being unveiled, and we're playing out that roadmap. You know, I can't express how macro the current environment is. Everything I look at suggests that we've got an enormous amount of events on the horizon. Now, some of those will play our way, some of them won't. But I really do think that the opportunity set given in macro is one of the biggest I've ever seen. So we'd love you to join us on that journey. Let's see where this whole thing evolves to and what really lies ahead. So a couple of years ago when Raoul first approached me, um, and it was a behest of, uh, of a client of his actually, who said, I'd like to hear you and Julian talk and thrash things out. And the objective when we started off the business was to try and do two things. Firstly, to try and pe make people money, okay? At the end of the day, this is what this is about. This is how we keep you guys coming back. And, you know, recently we've been lucky. I mean, we've been sitting here and there are long tracks of, uh, of period where macro, you're really setting up a framework, you're setting up a game plan, you're looking at how parts are moving. And then as those things come onto the radio and they really start to kick in, you act. So we've had a great run in precious metals since the start of this year. We've managed to make, you know, 40 and 50% on some of the trades that we recommended. We had a great comment from uh, one particular client who said, I've made enough money on my portfolio this far to, uh, to pay off my house. So, and I keep thinking, I wish I'd made enough money to pay off my house. But anyway, that's beside the point. But the... We do try and make you money. So we've had that call on gold at the end of last year, um, particularly myself, we were looking at some of these very high flying FANG stocks that they were referred to. You can call them momentum or call it what you will. And a lot of these things were beginning to start to look really tired. And it was a combination of what we thought, and we'd been setting out this sort of hawkishness that we were getting from the Fed, which we thought was highly caustic to these very high flying stocks. And then some of the chart patterns. And we combined those two together to make some really big calls and some very aggressive calls on the likes of Microsoft, Nvidia, Netflix. We hate Netflix still. We think that one's going a lot, lot lower. And those are some of the, of the, the recent trades. We've also been uh, long bonds uh, from the start of this year. We thought the Fed was gonna have to cut. 
Raoul has continued to push that trade uh, very aggressively and very successfully. We took some uh, of that position off. We actually flirted with going the other way. But whatever we do something, look, we always set pretty clear stops. And we're now starting to publish very clear directable trades with stops and entry levels uh, to help you guys. But there's something else which I think to me is a big win that we try and do. And that's not just directly in the dollars and cents, okay? Because there's many things that we may not be looking at, um, which you may be and may be more pertinent to your portfolio. And we can't delve into absolutely everything. The big win that I like to think and what I really like to see when we listen to people, when we go and look at the, co the bulletin boards and we see what people are saying, is the win that we get in terms of teaching you how to think about your investments from a macro perspective. Because we're in and we're entering, I believe, having been in a real world where, you know, macro hasn't necessarily counted so much, right? When you flood the world with liquidity, okay, you can be long pretty much every single asset and still make money. But as we come to the end of this cycle, okay, when we come to the end of the efficacy of some of the central bank tools, right? I think the Fed's got one more shot at cutting rates. Um, but really then we're gonna be increasingly pushing on a string we're still going to continue to play that macro theme because what we hope to see then and what we believe is going to be the case is we're going to start to see the fiscal policy start to kick in. And we've been talking to clients about how we're coming to the end of this period of this very liberal period of laissez-faire economics, freewheeling central banks, et cetera, et cetera. And we think we're going to enter this period where it's very, very different. And guys, we truly hope that one of the big wins we can give you is helping navigate you because it's not only about just generating P&L from your portfolio. It's going to be strategic decisions that you make with you know, your main investments, your houses, your businesses, right? These are some of the things that we are really trying to get over to people and help them really think about the world. And that's what we think Macro Insiders will help you do. So look, if you find that intriguing and you believe that we're at an interesting point in the economic and historic cycle, right, which is when macro is the most poignant and the most important strategy that drives returns and the world, frankly, click on the link. Doesn't take much time. Check us out. See if we really will deliver. We hope we will. We think we have up until now. I think you can see there's some comments uh, of existing customers. Join us.